Uh, I'll be talking about our quiz ball box, which is an incremental question answering system. This is also part of a larger project um, algorithm that thinking on their feet. So first, why are we interested in this incremental algorithm? One of the important reasons is that humans process language incrementally. So here's a um, prefix from two emails. Can anyone guess what the emails are about? So these are decision letters. Um, yeah, and I'm sure, yeah, so the left one is the rejection letter, and the right one is the acceptance letter. Like, uh, whenever I got my paper decision letter, I don't even to open my email to know the result, just by looking at the first few words. So I'm trying to show that humans are lazy readers. At any point, we have a sense of what's going on in a sentence, even before we finish reading it. And we would only try to read more uh, if we really need that information. Like, if you know what I'm going to talk about next, you're probably doing something else now. So our goal is to build computer systems that can make predictions and decisions before all inputs are gathered. And one such fun application is Quizball. If you're not familiar with the game, it's a quiz game. And the moderator reads a question, and two teams compete to answer the question, often before the question is finished. So to, under, to answer the question, they need to buzz in first. If they give a correct answer, the game ends and they get the points. Otherwise, the moderator will continue to read the question, and the, the other team gets to play. All right, here's the example question, and we'll go through it together just to get a sense about how the game works. So I'm going to read this question, and if, if you know the answer, feel free to shout it. Okay, uh, with Leo Stiller, he invented a double eponymous refrigerator with no moving parts. He did not take interaction with neighbors into account when formulating his theory of heat capacity, so Dubai adjusted his theory for low temperatures. His summation convention automatically sums repeated indices in tensor products. His name is attached to the A and B coefficients for spontaneous and simulated emission, the subject of one of his multiple groundbreaking 1905 papers. Okay, someone should have get the answer now. He further developed the model. Okay, I heard something. Uh, he, he further developed model of statistics done to him by both to describe particles with integer spin for 10 points, who is this German physicist who is best known for formulating the special and general theories of relativity. Okay, so I'm sure at this point, all of us know that uh, the answer is Albert Einstein. And you might have also uh, realized that at the beginning, the clues are really obscure. It's hard to get the answer. But towards the end, it becomes easier and the answer is more obvious. So with the buzzing mechanism, the design of these questions are meant to test who really knows the deep and unknown facts about a subject or an entity. All right, so how do we build a quizable bot that can play with humans? At the beginning, we've seen that humans are lazy readers and we have a hypothesis at any point and we read information only when it's needed. So similarly, we want our system to have a tentative answer after reading each input word and the model should also be automatically deciding when it should bust in to output the prediction. So uh, our model consists of two modules. First is the content model. This is the question answering part. So the input is a partial question, and output is a distribution of all possible answers. And the second module is a buzzing model. This is the decision making part. It decides whether we should wait for more information, in which case the content model gets to see more words, or it should buzz. Uh, in that case, it will output the current prediction with the highest score. So we'll go through these two modules one by one. The first is content model. We frame this problem as a text classification problem. So the input are, is text from questions. And we assume that there's a finite set of answers uh, we need to predict. So we use a vector space model. Basically, we map both the questions and answers into the same embedding space. So in this figure, 
uh, you see that uh, at the bottom is a question embedding. You, we embed the question, uh, you can use any neural network models like recursive neural network, LSTM, or just continuous bag of words. So now we get a point of the question in that space, and then we embed the answers. Here star is the correct answer, and red dots are the wrong answers. So during training, our loss function would encourage the question embedding to be close to the correct answer embedding and away from the wrong answer embedding. Okay. Um, next is the buzzing model. Here we solve this problem uh, by decision making as a decision making process. So um, the information we can use to make decisions, which is what we call a state, includes the observed words uh, and also our current prediction. And the actions model can take is to buzz, which is out predict, uh, output the prediction, or to wait for more information. And our goal is to find a mapping or a function that maps from a state to an action. So if we have state action pairs, we can solve this by supervised learning. We just learn a binary classifier as our action predictor. So these are our state representation. We use, uh, our features include the current observed words, the current guesses and their confidence scores, and also the change of scores from last guesses. So these features tell us how confident we are about our current prediction. So to learn this classifier H, how do we uh, get the ground truth action? So during training, we have this simple oracle that tell us if the current prediction is correct, we should bust out for the prediction, otherwise we should wait for more information. So this is very straightforward. We go through each word in the question, we extract the state features, and the article gives us the ground truth action. Now we have a data set of state action pairs and we can learn a classifier to predict the actions. All right, so um, we built our system and we have our results in the paper, but I think the real interesting part is to see how the system performs in uh, real time. So last year, we have the system played against Ken Jennings, the Jeffrey champion in Seattle. So I'm gonna show a video clip of the uh, match. And the main character in this play refers to his chauffeur, Straker, as an example of the new main, and authored a set of aphorisms sometimes published as an appendix to this play, The Revolutionist Handbook. In this play's third act, which is often performed separately from the rest of the drama, a statue of Roebuck Ramsden overlooks a conversation with the devil containing Don, uh, Juan, and Hell. Its main plot follows Anne Whitefield, convincing John Tanner to settle down and marry her. For 10 points, name this... Man and Superman. Also correct. Um, yes, yeah, so in, in this case, the computer got the question correctly. So uh, here's our interface. You can see we review the question uh, word by word, and then at the bottom we show the system's current prediction and the um, uh, confidence score of this, each question. And we also have the system played against um, uh, professional quiz bowl players. The most recent one is uh, this past uh, this summer. Uh, we played against. Uh, we have a workshop and we, our best system played against the California's National All-Star Academic Tournament team. And we end up with uh, humans 190 versus machines 155. So there is still some space for improvement. And I'd like to uh, briefly talk about uh, how we can, uh, one possible direction for improvement. So when humans play against different players, we, uh, we often say like in the strategy games, when you play against different types of players, you would often adjust your strategy. So here, uh, like, King Jenny is a Jeopardy, Jeopardy player, so probably he's used to bust late to answer the question at the end. While these professional quiz bowl players tend to be more aggressive, they want to bust, bust early and give a, a question. So these are um, cautious, player and, cautious players and aggressive players. Now, if we're playing against a cautious player, we can afford to wait longer and to see more words because the opponent tend to buzz late also. And, but if we're facing with aggressive players, we want our system to buzz in earlier as well. Uh, and also different people have strengths in different categories. Some 
are good at art questions, some are good at history questions. So we can exploit the, wit, uh, the, weak, um, the weakness of our opponents. Like you know this guy is not good at art questions, we might just wait until he gives the wrong answer so that we get more points. All right, so one approach to uh, in consider um, opponent's behavior is to uh, model opponent type as a latent variable. So uh, we build a deep reinforcement network. At a high level, the system works like this. So we, ha uh, we, we, we have the model compute different strategies against different types of co components. So if the opponent is cautious, we can wait longer. Otherwise, uh, we should buzz earlier. And the other module try to observe the opponent's past behavior and try to predict uh, what's the type of the opponent, whether this is a cautious player or this is an aggressive player. And then the final module would take information from both modules. We have different, uh, different strategies and we also have estimates of the opponent's type. Then we combine this to make um, adaptive prediction. All right, uh, so that's a brief introduction of the Fuisbo system. Um, but so I, I want to mention that um, although we did this, uh, in, did the work in this game setting, the same idea of reasoning with incomplete information applies to other domains as well. So in the standard, uh, if we do, uh, if we do it in a standard way, we would have our system wait for the user to hit enter, then collect all information, then make a one-time prediction. However, here we're proposing a dynamic system that maintains a tentative prediction at any time. So even if the user um, hit control C, we would have some prediction. And the model can also automatically decide when to commit to uh, its prediction. And this is important in many interactive applications. One example is simultaneous machine, tra uh, simultaneous translation. So there, instead of just give the system one sentence and wait for to translate, the system receives the continuous stream of speech, and then the model has to decide where to segment the speech and when to start translate. And also, um, it's important in um, uh, early prediction, uh, early predicting of users' problems and goals in dialogues. For example, in customer service, if we can identify the user's problem early on, we can give some options, suggestions, or redirect user to uh, relevant teams. Okay, um, finally, I would like to thank my collaborators. They all worked on the Quizbo systems. And thank you. Um, uh, I'm happy to take any questions. Questions? So you mentioned like Jeopardy versus the Quiz Bowl. Have you tested this on like a Jeopardy type of situation as well? And did it perform, you know, as good or, you know, better than some of the machines they played on that game? Uh, we didn't test on that, but, they, um, but our question model is trained in a general way. So I think it, work on, it would work on Jeopardy questions as well. Just curious. While people are thinking of more questions, do you want to elaborate a bit on the possible application to simultaneous translation or customer service, some of your further thoughts? I know a lot of the people in the audience are particularly interested in the customer service problem. Um, right, so for customer service, uh, I'm thinking like, now, when users are describing a problem, they go very elaborative. They describe everything they did. Um, but it's hard to figure out what the real problem is. So now, if we can, like, if we can predict the problem before the user finishes describing it, we can give some suggestions for um, our intermediate prediction of the user problem. Then user can click on the, uh, can click on the problems if we predict it correctly so that we can also get some training data. So I guess my way of thinking it is like when you go to uh, Google search, when you start to type something, it tries to complete your query. And same in customer service, like before I finish talking about my problem, if you can uh, give me some prediction of what I 
what, what I'm talking about. I, it seems both of our time. It's kind of funny that the same thing that makes us so irritating to our spouses, you know, finishing their sentences for them and not letting them finish, is actually a good thing in natural language processing. Uh, well, I don't know, but if you go to uh, Google search, it completes query for you, or you, like, sometimes we, we find it's convenient. Yes. Yes, we have a question here. So my question is around, uh, have you thought about uh, use this uh, incremental prediction in a dialogue situation? Meaning that uh, the question can be vague at the beginning, but how you guided uh, uh, the human to for more predictable situation through a dialogue? Um, I think in dialogue, by definition, it's kind of incremental. But I guess incremental on what level? There, are, we still process the whole sentence to make a response. Um, I am not sure if you. Yeah, like I guess in dialogue it does have the question that you just mentioned. We don't want to interrupt people, um, but I, but I think it's important to track this dynamic uh, theme in a dialogue. That people can divert their uh, intention in a dialogue. So um, it's good to have a model that can track this dynamics. Any other questions? Great, thank you very much.